Right, students. So now we have understood those three questions that were taking place in front of us. Now the question arises, the last point, acquaintance knowledge. So how does one acquire knowledge? So here uh, there are uh, three to four things which are available to us. And I'm going to uh, discuss each one of them, uh, not completely in one, um, uh, I should say, video. However, in uh, uh, some uh, sequence, uh, let's put it in that manner and one after the other I would be able to make you understand as to how and why and in what way these things are taking place first and foremost is whenever we want to acquire knowledge remember there are two ways in which we can do one is a priori and the other one is a posteriori knowledge now how do you distinguish these two things is something that you need to understand and um, make a note somewhere that yes what we mean by a priori now in general I'm not going to pinpoint and say that yes so and so person can't has said a priori or mill is going to take up over this or bentham is going to talk about this or post structuralists are going to talk about it i'm in simple words i have just introduced a priori and a posteriori and let us understand what exactly these are now here we will see that in a priori knowledge what is it actually it is the knowledge that is known independently of experience what does this mean it means that um, i don't have to experience about something i just get gain the knowledge how i received it you know uh, there is no for example uh, i will be showcasing to you in the next slide one of the uh, diagram wherein it's a very uh, i mean popular one from my side and i really love uh, showcasing it to all my students also and wherever i'm giving and uh, speaking about this and you will see that part of that acquiring knowledge comes through directly through with the help of the senses so we call it as sensory uh, knowledge or uh, acquaintance knowledge no a priori uh, let's see whether that also is existing for us or not now once that scene has taken place all the senses and one after the other uh, has taken place and everything is said from sensory level you have completed you come to the conceptual level where we are just talking about theories concepts everything is in the form of the language if it is the language you know uh, there is no need for me to get experience of something i just uh, go ahead and understand through the help of the language now the question arises for example if somebody tells me okay i'm talking about the chinese apple what does the chinese apple mean i know that there are so many varieties of the apples however when you talk about chinese apple i get two concepts one is it is chinese the second one is that it is apple apple I do understand it has so and so shape, so and so color. However, the moment you attach the word, associate the word um, Chinese, then the question arises. If you tell me, okay, Ramni ma'am, I'm talking about Chinese cup. I'll be able to understand. Okay, she's talking about a Chinese cup. Immediately, I'll understand. It's a small size cup. Uh, only it can be uh, that you know uh, the colors are different otherwise the shape of the Chinese cups we all know so you know I don't have to get an experience or go to China in order to understand what exactly is a Chinese cup I have seen I uh, I mean not even seen just by the words I'll be able to understand it now those kind of a things we call it as a priori knowledge so it means that they are non empirical that means uh, I don't require any uh, experience of it with the help of the sense organs number one number two they are acquired through anything independent from experience now your question arises uh, is it possible now think about it now when you're watching a movie you never visited to Kashmir or uh, let's say you never visited to China However, when you see those movies, uh, you know, you are able to understand, okay, the hero has gone to China. So, you know, how do you know that yes, he is in China, whereas the entire film must have been shot in a studio? Now, these are the things that I want you to think about it. Then comes a posteriori knowledge. Now, what is this knowledge all about? Now, here you will see that it is the kind of the knowledge which is known by experience in the sense that I need to see it. I need to hear it. I have to touch it. 
i need to feel it you know all the five sense organs are acting uh, actively okay number one number two we do get that kind of an experience you know we start off with the pure consciousness level without any um, attachment or association of the language we are not at the concept level we are not at the language we are not even acquainted to the knowledge we see everything we perceive i, I mean i'm not even supposed to use the word perceive i'm just seeing it looking at it sensing it and have that kind of a sensory experience so those things are called as the a posteriori knowledge now when you watch a movie what is it is it a priori knowledge that you gain or you gain a, a posteriori knowledge or it's a combination of both a priori and a posteriori or is it something <coughs> <clears throat> else that is taking place so you need to understand as to what exactly is taking place and we will be able to understand now here you can have a look at what uh, bruce russell has to say about uh, these things uh, in his paper a priori justification and knowledge however i'm not entering too much um, into the depth however you can look and think about it from the perspective of these two things that i have given to you and try to understand as to what is taking place in my next video i'll be talking about analytic and synthetic distinction and associated with films till then thank you bye